I'd like to welcome you to West Henrietta Baptist Church and our service this morning. Hopefully it's another beautiful day. And I'm going to be reading from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6 and 14 through 18. Lord, you have examined me and you know me. You know everything I do. From a far away, you understand all my thoughts. You see me, whether I am working or resting. You know all my actions, even before I speak. You already know what I will say. You are all around me on every side. You protect me with your power. Your knowledge of me is too deep. It is beyond my understanding. In verse 14, I praise you because you are to be feared. All you do is strange and wonderful. I know it with all my heart. When my bones were being formed carefully, put together in my mother's womb, when I was growing there in secret, you knew that I was there. You saw me before I was born. The days allotted to me had all been recorded in your book before any of them ever began. Oh God, how difficult I find your thoughts. How many of them there are. If I counted them, they would be more than the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. May God bless the reading of his word. Good morning, West Henrietta Baptist Church and our friends on social media. It's a privilege to have you in our worship today. The text was ably read by Joyce. And I want to talk this morning on the topic the examined life. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for this new day. First day of the week. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine. Thank you for family and friends. And now thank you for your word. At this time of studying your word, grant to us receptive hearts and minds. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. The examined life. Isn't it scary that so much is known about us? So much is known about you and me in this technological age. Amazingly, more than we could ever imagine are known about us by people we have never met. Throughout the ages, people have claimed in various ways to prove and to reassure themselves that God knows them. And, and the psalmist, the writer of Psalm 139 is singled out for this sermon entitled The Examined Life. The first thing I want to point out in the text is God's knowledge of us. Personal knowledge of us. 
verses 13 to 16 talk about God's knowledge of us. In particular, God knows our beginning. For you have created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me are written in your book before one of them came to be. The psalmist declares that God knew him. And this psalm describes how God knows us from our mother's womb, says the psalmist. And I believe there is unspeakable comfort, the sort of comfort that energizes the believer in knowing that God is constantly taking knowledge of us in love and watching over us for our good. Verses 1 to 3 uh, says that God knows our activities. You have examined me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. You examine life. Does it bother you knowing that God knows your every move? Of course, there are times when unexpected things come up, but nothing is unexpected to God. God knows when things happen, and even before they happen. Knowing that he knows our thoughts, shouldn't we work harder to entertain? good thoughts. Speaking through the prophet Hosea, God says to the Israelite people, it was I who knew you in the wilderness. It was I who knew you in the land of drought. To say that God knew Israel in the wilderness is not to say that God became aware that they were in the wilderness, that he acquired information which he had previously lacked. Now, God knew them in the wilderness means God sustained them in the wilderness. God encouraged them in difficult times in the wilderness. And God nurtured them. And God prospered them when they were without resources. Friends, we should never shrink from God's searching. Searching us and knowing us. We should welcome it and exalt in it. God's knowing us can only prosper us. And I want you to know this morning that God knows everything about you. There are no secrets when it comes to God. 
Is this styrofoam? Is this fright? Is this a wake up call for us this morning? To be reminded that God knows everything about us. God knows where you were last night. And God knows what you did last night. God knows. There's a second point I want to make. Is that the psalmist praised God. Because God's knowledge is so vast. That God knows everything about our personal life. That God uh, knew us from the very beginning. Even before we were born. He says God formed us. He knits the parts of our body together. Hear the psalmist again. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. Somebody praise God this morning. Not only that God knows you, but God has you in mind. He created you. Implied in this wondrous declaration and in many other texts of scripture is the affirmation that we are God's underwork. You are intricately and, and exact in the shape by God's crafting. He's like the potter. He formed you and he, he crafts you into the person you are. It speaks volumes about our worth, our value, and the premium that God himself places on you. To know that each human life is so loved and treasured by the word made flesh in Jesus Christ our Savior through whom all things were made. God knowing you is God's treasuring of you. One of the most vivid characteristics of God is that God is love. God sees all of the twisted things about us and that those things are fellow man, fellow woman, fellow persons our neighbors cannot see. God sees the corruptions in our life. And yet God loves us. With an everlasting love. Can somebody praise God this morning? As a personal being, God is capable of loving and being loved. And as a personal being, God loves each one of us intimately and personally. God's love is not a sentimental, a vague, or diffuse feeling. God really loves his people. Amazingly, isn't it? God knows us and still loves us. God knows that we are sinners. Yet he forgives. When we are sick, he heals. And when we are in the pit, he pulls us out. We're often ungrateful. 
for his good gifts. We are often ungrateful for his blessings, yet he gives them to us anyway. And in our sinfulness, we deserve justice, yet he grants us mercy. Is there someone there to praise God this morning for his mercies? God's love for us is beyond human comprehension. The Bible reminds us over and over again of the comfort and peace that comes from being known and loved by God. We are truly known and perfectly loved even more clearly and truly than we know ourselves. There are a number of persons who would like somebody to love them this morning. There are some persons who are yearning for love this morning. There are some persons who have not heard in a long time, I love you. But I want to assure you this morning that God loves you. In fact, it is often quite difficult for us to know ourselves well, to, to discern clearly our longings, our needs, and our deepest desires. This is especially true in times of pain and suffering, in time of wandering, in time of, uh, of, of lostness, you feel lost in the world, alienated, estranged beaten down some of you may be experiencing the blues this morning and you want to flap down Jesus and say come over here I'm hurting I need you to fix me It's a painful reality that much of what limits us in our lives is a misunderstanding of the love of God for us. He loves us with an exceedingly great love. And Jesus does want to heal us. And he wants to comfort us. And yes, he comes and he heals our deepest longings and our truest needs. Since God knows us better than we would ever know ourselves, we are free to take a deep breath. Take one again. Open your hands and with humble heart say to God, even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of my great pain, I, I trust that you know my greatest need. Trust that you know my deep longing. And I won't try and run ahead of you or tell you what is best for me. Because if I knew what was best for me, I would have done it. God, you know best. So I wait upon you and I praise you. Take heart today. And trust that this day is the day of the Lord. And you shall rejoice today because it is the day of the Lord. Take heart today. And trust that the thing in your life that feels like it might be your undoing can instead... Be something you offer to God for healing and restoration. 
Though it may seem improbable or even impossible, nothing is too great for a God who knows you better than you know yourself. And let me close with the third. And we look at God's knowledge of us, that God knows us from the very beginning, from our mother's womb. And because God knows us and God treats us as so well, and because we were made in the image of God, and God cares and protects and, and preserves us, we praise him. And because of that, God has helped us to know ourselves. God wants us to have self-knowledge. He provides us with information about ourselves so that in turn, we can know ourselves. God made you beautiful. And he says you are valuable. In Genesis, he says we were very good. He examined what he made. And he said it was very good. I suspect that those closest to you have revealed things about you that you did not know about yourself. We human beings are enormously complex and complicated while at the same time we are exceedingly frail and fragile. Freud helped us to see the unconscious rationalization of the human being. Since you and I are rationalizing every day, do you know yourself? Do I know myself? Do you know the premium God has placed on your life? Today there are a host of issues clamoring for our attention. And I go back to a point we are made in the image of God. And if that is so, I think I'm correct to say, help me and join me in denouncing and rejecting racial profile. Racial profiling, racism, prejudice, discrimination, and racial violence. All such acts are ungodly and sinful. Not only does God love us, he is also at work in our lives. And Paul describes us as God's masterpiece. Every one of us is God's masterpiece which God loves and God is working on to make us beautiful so that he can shine his light through us to the world. The passage from Psalm 139 speaks of God as a knitter. And Jeremiah speaks of God as the potter. Jeremiah 18, 1 to 11. Hear the psalmist again. It was you, Lord, who for my inmost part, you, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. From a biblical point of view, Human life is not simply a natural biological occurrence. It is, at the same time, the result of the will and the work of a benevolent creator, God himself. Human life is really a miracle when you think about it. Why is it then that we are so insecure so awash in feelings of worthlessness, ever battling a seemingly deeply seated sense of inadequacy. If it is a glorious truth, as the psalmist asserts, 
that we are fearfully and wonderfully made? Why are we filled with some fear and so little wonder? It is a painful reality that much of what limits us in our lives is our own feelings of unworthiness and self-hatred. There are so many persons who hate themselves. Dr. Robert Firestone argues that each of us has a real self, a part of us that is self-accepting, goal-directed, and life-affirming as well as an anti-self, a side of us that is self-hating, self-denying, paranoid, and suspicious. The anti-self is expressed in a critical inner voice. The critical inner voice is like an internal coach negatively commenting on our lives influencing how we behave and how we feel about ourselves. There are so many persons who don't like themselves. They don't like their eyes. They don't like their ears. They don't like their nose. They don't like the texture of their hair. They don't like the color of their skin. I challenge you this morning to love what God has made. God has made you good. Love yourself. Respect yourself. There has never been anyone just like you or me in the past. And there will never be anyone just like you or me in the future. So each of us is precious. Each of us is irreplaceable. We are created by God. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hear the psalmist again. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. In essence, the Lord knows everything about us. God knows us inside out. And so I want you to reach out to this God this morning, the God we know, the God of our father Abraham, the God of Isaac and Jacob, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Reach out to him as the God who protects. You need not fight your own battles. Second Chronicles 20 verse 17 says, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. God will bless you. God will lift you up over troubled waters. God will be your bridge over troubled waters. And I cannot end this sermon this morning without inviting you to accept God's plan of salvation for your life. Before God, we stand naked, helpless, and hopeless in ourselves. And God has given us eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. In other words, the way to possess eternal life is to possess God's son. No good works. No good thoughts can get us into the kingdom of God. We have to accept God's grace. God's grace, unearned, unmerited, and undeserved. And I want you to choose God this morning. The choice is a personal one. The decision you make this morning is personal. It is urgent and it determines your destiny. Amen.